Hey there, I'm Chase Hansen, your DFW Realtor, here today to talk about the pros and cons of both buying and renting when it comes to your living situation. Look, I own my own home now, but I've rented apartments and homes in the past. I get it. I'm not going to be the realtor who craps on people for renting. I understand that not everyone is in a place to buy a house right this moment. And so it's important to weigh what's best for you and your family as you look into where you want to live, how much you want to spend on it, what's best for you in the long term. So my goal, and the reason I got into this business in the first place, is to help people have a place to call home and make that process as understandable and positive of an experience as possible. So hopefully this video does that for you today. Uh, so let's talk about it. Is it better to buy or to rent a home? Before we get into it, go ahead and hit the subscribe button, hit the like button to stay informed and keep up with both real estate info and local highlights for the DFW area. All right, let's start with what matters most for a lot of people, finances. So where you live is usually your biggest expense you have on a month to month basis. So this is really important to think about, right? So what are some of the financial pros and cons of renting versus uh, financial pros of buying? So one pro on the renting side is maintenance costs. In apartments, you can usually call a maintenance person if your sink is dripping. They may not answer the phone and take three days to follow up on your request, but you're not on the hook for hiring a plumber. Uh, in a rental house, you might be responsible for some of the normal maintenance and upkeep, but if the AC just explodes and goes out and needs replaced, that's typically your landlord's responsibility. So what about on the buying side? One big pro is fixed monthly payments, and this is huge, so make sure you get this. Once you lock in your mortgage, your monthly payments won't be changing for the life of the loan. There's no landlord to raise the rent next year if you don't want to move out. This is huge. If you get a 30 year fixed rate mortgage, you could stay in that house for two years, 10 years, 20 years, even until you pay it off 30 years later and the costs you pay towards your loan year after year won't go up. That means stability, that's something you can budget around and as the costs of everything else in the world keep going up like they always have, what's probably your biggest expense stays the same. And maybe you buy now, but down the road a year or two, the mortgage interest rates drop down super low like they did in 2021. Well, then you can refinance your loan and lock in even lower monthly payments at that lower interest rate. But if the rates go up, you don't have to do anything. You just keep your fixed rate that you've already been comfortable paying. You really can't beat it. It's one of the most attractive things about home ownership from a financial standpoint because of how much stability it gives you. Okay, back to the renting side. A big pro of renting is no property taxes. As a renter, you are not directly paying for property taxes. If that's a bill that isn't coming to you, your name's not on the address. Property taxes pay for things like schools, roads, city budget def deficits, community infrastructure, development projects, you name it. It's, it's the catch-all. Uh, outside of your mortgage payments, property taxes are usually the other big expense for what you're thinking about in your monthly payments as an owner. Now, a caveat to this one, if you're renting a house, you might not be getting the bill for the property taxes, but the cost of the property taxes is probably factored in to how much you're being charged for rent. So you might be paying for someone else's property taxes, but at least the government isn't sending you the bill directly, right? All right, back to the buying side. A huge pro of home ownership, arguably the biggest, depending on how long you own a place, is equity. Now. This is one of those things I don't want you to miss. It's kind of a buzzword, an industry term, and to be honest, I didn't fully understand what it was until I was a realtor and really began to look at it on paper. Equity is the amount of value in your home above what you owe in your mortgage. It's how much more cash you have in your house than when you first bought it. So say you bought a house for 300,000 with a $15,000 down payment and three years later, it's worth about uh, 338,000. That's about 4% appreciation a year, so a fairly normal appreciation rate in most markets. So before your selling costs, you have about $53,000 in equity. That 38,000 in the three years plus the 15,000 you put down. Look at the amount your home's value has risen since you bought it. Now don't miss this because this is the secret that makes a bunch of people rich in real estate. It's what makes real estate a really good investment. It's why all the rich people put their money in real estate, right? The reason people are afford 
able to afford bigger and bigger houses and retire in these nice expensive places is because when you move, you can take your equity and put it towards getting into your next place. So take our example from a second ago. You've more than tripled the amount of down payment you can put towards your next house. That's why home ownership is such a good investment. That's why homeownership gives so many people a sense of financial stability because it's the number one tool for most people to build wealth over the course of their lives. Okay, we'll do one more pro for each and then we'll move on to the cons. Another pro for renting is that you avoid market fluctuations. You avoid market fluctuations. The housing market moves in cycles like any other part of the economy. And so sometimes it's a buyer's market, which means there's more people trying to sell than buy at a given moment. And so buyers have more negotiating power and more options available. And sometimes it's a seller's market. That means there's less houses available than people looking. And so sellers have more negotiating power. And uh, that's when you see like multiple offers, stuff like that. Uh, market activity changes with the seasons, and so how easy it is to buy or sell and move can sometimes be subject to the whims of the market, right? Now with renting, you typically don't see that. It's more of a straightforward uh, monthly payment transaction where a unit goes up at a listed price and you can sign a lease and or not. There's not a lot of negotiating involved, and so moving in and out isn't really dependent on the outside forces, but more on your particular lease terms. Last financial pro we'll hit for owning instead of renting is the investment options that come with ownership. So your house is typically your largest investment, and we already talked about the equity side of things, but there's also the opportunity to treat your house like an investment to maximize that, right? So not that many people really consider this, but it's based on the two main types of real estate investing, and that is fix and flip and buy and hold. So fix and flip investing is what you usually think is flip houses. For your personal house though, this can be a really helpful thing to think about. I'd recommend thinking of the things that you can invest time and money in while you're living there to leave it better than when you first moved in. So does the kitchen need updated? Do the bathrooms look like you're in 1970? Doing the things that make your home feel move-in ready and updated for the next owner maximizes your resale value. Now, buy and hold investments are about keeping a property long enough to maximize your equity. When you go to buy a new house, instead of selling your old one, you could turn around and rent it to uh, cover its mortgage and tax costs and pay for itself, essentially. And even if it doesn't create passive income yet, if it covers its own payments, then you're gaining equity over time and that value over time builds on itself. And so as rents trend upward, it may turn into a passive source of income for you. Okay, let's talk cons. We won't spend as long on these since they kind of become obvious when they contrast with everything we just talked about. For buying, the primary financial cons you run into are needing a down payment. Now, if you're not a veteran, you're gonna need some cash to put down up front. And even if you aren't getting a 20% loan, 3.5%, 5%, 10% are still chunks of savings that you'll need to build to. Other buying cons are being responsible for things that break and need updated, and other fees like HOAs and property taxes. For renting, the big financial cons are that your rent can go up year after year after year. So you don't build equity, so your money just kind of disappears into your landlord's pocket rather than building towards your future. And you've got to deal with arbitrary fees like pet fees, admin and processing fees, losing security deposits over pointless things like a nail hole in a wall. Okay, that's the financial pros and cons. Next, let's move on to talk about the quality of life side of renting versus buying. Before we do that though, leave a comment if you think I missed anything or if I have anything to add as a pro or con for either renting or buying your home when it comes to the financial side of things. And while you're at it, if you haven't liked and subscribed yet, go ahead and hit those buttons. All right, let's talk about the differences in quality of life between buying a home and renting a home. So obviously the top priority is to have a place to live, right? That's one of our essential needs as humans is shelter, right? But the benefits of where we live and how we live there can differ a lot. Starting again with renting, 
a big pro of renting is the quality and the quality of life side of renting is the lack of responsibility for the place that you have. Uh, so you aren't as legally attached to your home and what happens to it. Uh, there is a flexibility that comes with that. An appliance is old, doesn't work great. It's not yours and you don't have to renew the lease if you don't want to. You don't like living in that part of town anymore. Once your lease is up, move to a new part of town. The foundation is shifting and needs work. You're not the one calling the foundation company and paying for that. It's a kind of carefree attitude that's harder to have when you own the place and need to look out for it more. Moving back over to the owning side is the flip side of that, right? So a big pro with owning a place is the ability to change stuff. Like you don't like the colors in the bathroom, paint it, change the tile. You don't need to call anyone or get approval. Uh, wish your house had a deck and a pool in the back? You can put one in. Uh, when your house is your own, there's a level of pride and creativity that kicks in. Uh, the first six months that I lived in my house, I couldn't stop doing little projects here and there just to make it feel like my own place. It was so fun to see my back porch transform into a place that I could entertain with my friends. And when I wanted to update the vanity in the hall bathroom, I got to make the call on what it looked like and when it happened. There's a freedom in ownership to do what you want because it's yours. Another pro to renting though is the options for amenities. So when you're renting, you've got your price range and the big decision is usually apartment or house, right? Now, you could find a community with a pool and a workout facility or somewhere close to your favorite shopping area or closer to work to cut down on your commute. Or if you'd rather have a backyard or you want to be in a certain school district, usually you can find rental options to fit your needs. And sometimes they come with perks like those community amenities without widening your price range too much. Now, another pro for buying is that you can bring your furry friends, house guests, whatever else you want with you. There's no one telling you who can live in your house, what you can do there. Uh, renting comes with rules and regulations, and one of the most common problems I run into helping renters in, is pets. Uh, most places you're going to rent have a lot of restrictions as to what kind of pets you can have, how many, how large they can be. A lot of places, apartments and houses alike, don't allow cats at all. A lot of places don't allow large dogs. A lot of places inflict arbitrary breed restrictions, uh, but for some reason still allow your neighbor to have a chihuahua that barks all night. Um, so that's a pro to buying, and we'll call it a con to renting as well. Um, a con of owning is back to that flexibility question. It's not nearly as easy to move when you own your own house. Uh, there are costs associated with selling. You have to wait for your house to sell. Uh, so if you get transferred or decide you want to move across town or you have another kid on the way and need an extra bedroom, it's not as easy as waiting out a lease. Another con to renting is that there's usually a limit to your rental options when it comes to size and area and luxury. So most rental properties that I see around are about three bedrooms or less, and so your space is limited. Usually you're not in the more expensive neighborhoods. Most rental properties aren't spending a lot on luxury updates or amenities, and the reason why that is is every rental is someone else's investment, and the return on investment is limited. So they're not gonna spend a bunch extra where it doesn't get a return. That means you aren't gonna get a higher end experience or updates without seeing a significant rise in your cost as a renter because the luxury rental market is a whole other animal. Okay, that's the quality of life pros and cons. Leave a comment if you have anything else to add as a pro and con to either renting or buying your home. Thanks for watching. I'm a realtor serving the greater Dallas-Fort Worth area and North Texas as a whole. If you or someone you know are looking to buy, sell, lease, invest in property in that area, I'd love to connect and help you however I can. Find me on Instagram and TikTok at Hanson Realtors DFW, and be sure to subscribe to my channel for more real estate tips and tricks and for local highlights of the DFW area. Leave a like, leave a comment, check out the other videos on my page. Thanks again for watching. See you next time.